This morning, we just invite you to lean into the grace of God that he has so freely given each of us today. Um, We are excited to celebrate that grace that he offers us, and um, we trust that upon receiving that grace that we are called to live differently, and he has given us a new direction, a new way of life. So um, we are excited to lean into that today. And I invite you to stand with me as we celebrate that and worship our God this morning. Thanks, Colin. One, two, three, four. Sometimes you gotta dance through the darkness, sing through the fire. You gotta stare down the giant, worship in the lion's den. Sometimes you gotta shout from the mountain, louder in the valley, trusting that he's gonna get you there. Sometimes you gotta welcome the wonder, wait for the answer, worship with your hands in the air. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise to the praise. In the highest praise, give him praise, give him praise, in the highest he is worthy, yes he is worthy of all of the praise. Sometimes you're gonna praise in the prison, cry out to heaven, shout it to the door, swing wide. Sometimes you gotta stand on your shackles, brave in the battle, worship with your hands held high. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Countless reasons why I'll praise you anywhere Every promise kept Goodness every step Each and every breath I'll praise you anywhere Faithful all my life Blessings day and night Countless reasons why I'll praise you anywhere Every promise kept Goodness every step Each and every breath I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of our you anyway. Amen. Our next song, uh, Jehovah, names several of the names that God is called in the Bible and then reminds us that we should call on him. And just want to give you what those are. Jehovah Jireh means the Lord will provide. Jehovah Nisi is the Lord, my refuge. Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. And Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is our peace. And couldn't we all use a little bit of that every day? So call his name. Every idol, he reigns without rival. He goes by the name of Jehovah, Jehovah. He speaks into 
His foes will be silent. He's fighting for Zion. Oh. There's no other God like Jehovah. Jehovah, his arm never tires. His eyes are like fire. There's no other God like. Jehovah, Jehovah, call the name, call the name, call the name, Jehovah. All our praise, all our praise, all our praise belongs to Him. Call the name, call the name, call the name. Jehovah, all our praise, all our praise, all our praise belongs to Him. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles. 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 Jehovah Jireh, meet your needs. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles. Jehovah Jireh, meet your need. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Call his name, y'all. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles. Jehovah Jireh, meet your need. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Call the name, call the name, call the name, Jehovah. All our praise, all our praise, all our praise belongs to Him. Call the name, call the name, call the name, Jehovah. All our praise, all our Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles. Jehovah Jireh, meet your needs. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be your What a gift it is that Jehovah is all of those things and so much more to us. And in this moment, I just want us each to take the time to recognize those gifts to us and how we can thank him and give back a portion of what he's given to us. I 
Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom. We praise you and worship you for the God that you are, for the God who provides, you're the God who is our refuge, you're the God who is our peace, you are the God who heals. We just praise you and thank you for that. Lord, we pray that we will feel your presence in this service today and that we will take you with us as we walk through this week. 
We pray that we can be your hands and feet, that we can be part of your healing, part of your peace, part of your providing in this world and to those that we know and love. We thank you, Lord, for the gifts you've given, and we pray you take those that we give back to you and you use them to your glory. Be with those that are here in this place, that they will take you with them as they go out. And for those that are not with us here in the building, we just pray that you are with them as well and that they feel your love and presence. We ask all these things in the holy, precious name of Jesus. Amen. Will you share the love of Christ with those around you? time we would like to invite all the children any children who would like to come up for the children's message to come on down or up out of my ear hello everybody how are you doing I know, I'm not the, usually the guy that talks to you. Is that going to bug you, Matthew? Okay, good. Hey, um, Owen, would you like to help me out for this? You feeling strong today? <laughs> yeah, you'll do great. Come on over here. Um, so before we, before Owen, thanks, Owen. Don't worry, you don't have to say anything or do anything. Well, you have to do something. I'll tell you in a bit. Um, so... Today we're looking at a passage from Galatians where Paul, who wrote the book, tells us that we, to reveal and reflect Christ and his love, should carry each other's burdens, okay? So, Owen's going to carry some stuff today. <clears throat> and this is the first thing you're going to carry, okay? I need you to turn it around here so everybody can see how much... How strong you are. Hold it nice like that, okay? You're just going to hold this for as long as you can, all right? That's all you have to do. Keep your arms straight. Keep it up. Yep. Piece of cake, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, so this is life, <clears throat> okay? Right? Owen has to carry life, and we all have to carry life, right? Sometimes life gets a little bit heavy, though, right? When we're, the older we get, the more things we have to carry, the harder it becomes to hold on to our life. Um, so this weight can be anything. <clears throat> <Don't>, <laughs> so, that sounded heavy, didn't it? Don't worry. Don't hurt yourself. How many of you like going to school? Do you like school? Raise your hand if you like school. Yeah, I don't know. So even if you do, thank you, even if you do like school or maybe you don't like school, it adds a lot of weight to your life, right? It's just to stay in school is tiring, exhausting. The older you get, you have more tests and more, like, relationships to deal with and more, uh, it just comes with a lot to it, right? So the weight of school gets added to your life. And you wobble a little bit, but you hold strong. Um, but other things can be added to your life, too, that give a little bit of extra weight. Huh? It's all That's, yeah. That's life, buddy. Um, <laughs> sometimes, maybe you get sick, or maybe a family member gets sick, or gets injured, and then you have to hold that weight, too, and it gets, life gets a little bit harder. 
to hold on to, right? <clears throat> and then maybe, how you doing? Yeah. What? Come on. <laughs> Sorry, these are heavy. I'll go quick, okay? Maybe uh, you get in a fight with a friend, or maybe you have a bad relationship with your uh, family or your brother and sister. Maybe you're not getting along very well, and that's another way you have to carry. Ready? No. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> Here, don't hurt, don't hurt yourself. Sit down. Just pretend like you're holding it for a little bit. There you go. <laughs> I had Gideon do this in the first service, and he was having a lot of trouble too, so no shame. Life is heavy, right? And then whatever else gets added onto life uh, makes life even harder to hold on to, okay? Now, you have two options when you're holding on to that much weight in life, right? You could either drop it because you can't carry it anymore, or what, would, what do you think would help you hold that up? Yes, Matthew? Absolutely, God. Yes, we have a father. I bet if your dad, Jeremy Brubaker, you're a big, strong guy. I bet if you came up here, you'd be able to lift this up as his father. Nice and easy, right? But remember, Paul tells us that we reflect and reveal the love of Christ by carrying the burdens of others. So, do you think if we had a couple of your brothers and sisters help you carry this weight, that it would be a little bit easier to carry? Okay, come on. Somebody, can everybody come and help Owen hold this up? I know it's really heavy, but... Ugh. Okay. Woohoo! Owen, how's it feel? Easier, right? Okay. So, did the weight go away? Well... Are the weight still on your life? Is it still there? Yeah, it didn't just go away, right? But you have other people to help you carry it, which makes it easier. And Paul says that if we do this for each other, that's how we reveal Jesus to the world. If we love each other like this, by carrying each other's burdens, by carrying each other's weight, then we can show love to Jesus. All right, thanks, everybody. You can put this down so nobody hurts themselves. And if you sit down for a real quick second, then we'll pray together, and then you can go back to your seats. All right? Let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful for this time together. We're so grateful for these children who so well represented what it means to reflect your love to each other. And we just ask that we would know and have the wisdom to do that for each other, even away from this place. In our, Oh, hey, bud. Amen. <laughs> you can go back to your seats. I've asked Aiden to come help uh, read our scripture this morning, but before he does that, I just want to, did you? I got one for you. Uh, before Aiden reads, I just want to do a little scoop into this. I don't know if that's the right word, but I use it anyway. Uh, so we're looking at Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to chapter 6, verse 6 this morning. Um, Paul's letter to the Galatians is response. We're going to talk about this in a little bit. But Paul's letter to the Galatians is a response to something he'd been hearing about uh, the Galatian church that they were believing um, that made Paul a little upset. So he wrote a letter to them, and he closes the letter by saying, this is how we live according to God's Spirit. This is how uh, other Christians, uh, in accordance with God's Spirit, should live their life. And so Aiden's going to read that for us. Oh, yeah, you need a microphone. Sorry. Sorry. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its, pass with, with its passions and desires. 
Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you will live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks you are something when you are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they could take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to something to someone else, for each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the world and the word should share all good things with their instructor. You get applause. Will you join me in a word of prayer, please? Father God, we are grateful for the grace that you give to us, and we're grateful for the, the instruction for how to live our life, and for the grace that you allow us uh, to identify with your own life, and uh, we just pray that we would respond to your spirit within us through sacrificial love, we would respond with compassion, we would respond with empathy, um, and we would respond with a confidence that you have given us everything that we need to live um, according to your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so I'm going to, if you will allow me, I would like to start this little chat uh, with some boasting, bragging. I'm going to brag on myself a little bit. Uh, I know that's a, a really bad way to start a sermon, but I'm going to do it anyways I am so super good at carrying all of my groceries from the trunk of my car into the kitchen in just one single trip. Yes. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. Doesn't matter how many bags I have. Doesn't matter how heavy my groceries are. I'm not taking two trips up and down those steps. I refuse. Yes. I am the king of single trip grocery carrying. Some might call it stubbornness but I call it talent. Anybody else relate? Alan, I know you do. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah, we got some people who like to impress. Just kidding. I'm not impressing anybody. Uh, to be totally honest, I'm going to take back my statement. I'm probably not the best at it. Because of my refusal to take more than one trip, I have unfortunately dropped some things before. Let me tell you about a couple of those times. Uh, so one time, I was actually, like, pulling all of my groceries out of the shopping cart and putting them into my car, okay? Doing it one time, and because I was trying to do that, I dropped a gallon of milk in the parking lot. Super embarrassing. It did break open everywhere, including on my clothes. And I know you're not supposed to cry over spilled milk, but <laughs> the smell was really bad. Uh, so I shed a, a few tears. Uh, anyway, that was one time. Another time, a couple years ago, so I know we got a couple of our youth in the building. You know, we love to have a Christmas party every December, and I love to make some food for the Christmas party, right? So I don't remember exactly what year it was, maybe 2019. Um, I was getting my stuff ready, as I usually do, and we <clears throat> had... Um, Sorry to speak of this in the past tense. We had a very awesome triple crock pot cooker that I prepared three different appetizers in at the same time. And it was really awesome. Like make my barbecue meatballs, my little smokies, my buffalo chicken dip, all that good stuff. So when I was carrying this triple crock pot cooker, which is best carried with two hands, by the way, when I was carrying it with one hand so I could carry my food and bags in the other hand, carrying it to my car. Um, because of my refusal to take more than one trip, we unfortunately do not have a triple crock pot cooker anymore. There might still be some pieces of the crock pots in our garage. And it was a sad day. Anyway, 
So I might have been a bit premature in my boasting about how good I am carrying a bunch of things at once. Because clearly, I have failed multiple times. <clears throat> I have often heard the phrase, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. And I'm pretty sure this quote didn't come from people carrying too many groceries from, to and from their cars. But I have to say that if Paul heard this phrase, he would probably disagree with it. I think too often we have this idea in our heads that good people don't have to deal with heavy burdens, or that if we are carrying something too heavy, it's a result of some sort of unfaithfulness or failure to follow God's direction, God's law. But Paul pretty aggressively countered this idea with his understanding of the gospel message, especially in his letter to the Galatian church, which, like we said before, uh, we're going to take a few minutes to explore today. And as you saw up here in the children's message, today our goal is to better understand the significance of Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, which says, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Now, on the surface, I don't think this is a concept that's too difficult for us to understand, but the implications for our faith and for our relationship with Jesus and for our relationship with each other here in the space and the relationships that go out from here uh, the implications for those deserve a closer look into this message of Galatians and what Paul means by, specifically by the law of Christ, okay? So I'm going to take you through a journey of the Old Testament just very quickly of the importance and the significance of the law and how the law is perceived, okay? The law holds an important place in the mind and the heart of Jewish people. Their history writes about the necessity to follow the law of the Lord and to live by its wisdom so that the follower of God can know the character of God, can know the will of God, can know God's heart. And so as we read through the Old Testament, however, we find that God's people continu continuously fail to do this, right? They miss the point of the law. They fail to see it as instruction to build a relationship with God and with the community surrounding them. The standard that the law set could not and would not be followed by God's people. So the law shows that people were broken and that they needed a savior to fully be able to connect them with God. Instead, they viewed the law as a code designed for people to earn God's life and presence. And that's what happened to the Pharisees. They were looking too hard at the do's and don'ts of the law that they totally missed the point of what the law was designed to do. So it's like playing a complicated board game. Does anybody play board games? Big fan of board games? Yeah. I love board games. Uh, anyway, there are rules in place to help you enjoy the game as it was intended to be played, right? And some for the complicated board games, there's many, 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 many rules. But the design is so that you can enjoy the game more, right? But sometimes you can focus too hard on making sure you know and follow every single rule, and then you don't even get to play the game, right? So God's people are too caught up in the rules that they didn't understand the love and the life and the wisdom that was being communicated in the law through the rules, right? And so Jesus then enters the scene, and his death and resurrection cleansed God's people from the penalty of sin, from the penalty of not being able to follow the law, right, and made us righteous in God's eyes. And this is the gospel message. We are saved by grace. We didn't earn our salvation by finally at some point being able to follow the law, that salvation was freely given to us through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So God's people no longer need the law to connect us with God's heart. We can be directly connected to him by believing and identifying with the life and death of Jesus Christ. And so living by the law, as we see in the Old Testament, as we see now today, living by the law makes people undeserving of God's life. And Jesus freed us from that because he finished the terms of the law, and he, set, he gave us a new direction, a new way of living according to his spirit. And so God wants our presence because he loves us, and he made a way for that to happen through Jesus. That is the gospel, the whole story of scripture. We can't do it. Jesus has done it for us. Done it for us. How amazing is it to know that our relationship with God does not depend on me and you following the law, Receiving God's love and life does not depend on what we do or don't do. It is entirely, 100%, a work of Jesus Christ, and he has enabled us to take his righteous status for ourselves. We are able to be clothed in his righteousness so that we can have this right relationship with God. 
And this is what Paul went around preaching. Uh, this is the news that he was preaching to all people, right? Specifically to non-Jewish people as he took his missionary journeys. All could access God's life and know his love and have a relationship with the Creator. And they didn't need to do anything to earn this except to believe and receive God's Spirit. And so after sharing this news with the people of Galatia, right, and he started a church there, Paul moved on and he started other churches, but he eventually received a report that there were some Jewish missionaries who went to the church in Galatia and told the Galatians that Paul's teaching was incomplete. They said that Jesus' death, death and resurrection was, of course, real and happened, but Gentiles still had to participate in Jewish traditions and rituals to fully become members of God's family. And so this, when Paul heard that this was being taught to them, it didn't sit very well with Paul. So he writes a fiery letter to his new church in Galatia, and the letter opens with Paul writing, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Moving on later in chapter 3, he aggressively writes, You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law? or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? Did God give you the Spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law, or by you believing what you heard? Paul's point is that Jesus did enough on the cross. Again, this is the gospel message. Anything we try to add to that as a requirement for being a full member of God's family discredits the gospel and diminishes Jesus' work on the cross. I think we need to bring Paul's message home to me and to all of us here because I think many of us, again, my, myself very much included, get caught up at times in the same foolishness as the Galatian church. Paul's entire point in this letter is to remind these people that Jesus has purchased our, our salvation in full with his death and resurrection. That is the only thing that is necessary. We have done nothing. We can do nothing to earn our status with God. The moment we believe that our relationship with God depends on our own obedience to his law, then grace means nothing, and the gospel is no longer the gospel. In the death and resurrection of Jesus, our debt is fully paid for, and we are united with Jesus through the outpouring of his Holy Spirit. We are made righteous by God's grace and nothing more. And so if nothing else, we need to know this today. There is no amount of good thing we can do to earn oneness with God's Spirit. There is no level of morality we can achieve to get to heaven. The point of the entire Bible is Jesus has done that for you, and we are only able to do anything good through the Spirit of Jesus living in us. We always need to be reminded of our brokenness so that we then can be reminded of the incredible grace of God that covers over our failure, covers over our inability to be fully obedient. I do not have to achieve righteousness by living to God's law. I cannot earn righteousness by living to God's law. Jesus has done it, and I don't have to because I am clothed in his righteousness. So Paul goes on to write that this grace is, again, paired with an outpouring of God's spirit. And so those who receive that grace, that gift of grace, also receive the spirit of God, God's very spirit living with us. And that spirit within us directs us in living and loving like Jesus does. And that's what Paul writes in Galatians, Galatians chapter 5 that Aidan read this morning is that the Spirit directs us to a, love, to a life of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no written moral code to supplement this way of living. This Christian character is produced by the Holy Spirit, not by our moral discipline. So to summarize, this part. We cannot follow the law and earn life with God, but Jesus has done it, right? And he invites us to participate in his very life and death and resurrection. Our way forward now becomes receiving God's spirit and trusting in that direction that his spirit gives us. It's removing our own effort and power from the equation and having faith that God's spirit guides us to live in the way that Jesus lived. And this is what Paul refers to as the law of Christ, right? So in Galatians chapter 2, Paul writes, I have been crucified with Christ. 
and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. This is the law of Christ. Jesus loves me and gave me his spirit that moves me to love others. So it's really hard to summarize a letter from Paul in a short amount of time. Um, but I think it's so important that we get the full like, reason why Paul is writing to the Galatian church, because they are believing Jesus and, right? They're believing that something needs to be supplemented to the death and resurrection of Jesus. And it's important for us to know that Paul is writing that for that reason, or for that reason because that's what takes us into how Christians do live according to God's Spirit, which is the passage we read today. Um, and it also helps us to remember that we have no power to do it ourselves, right? The natural state of our heart is one that strives to be elevated. We hunger for honor. We want recognition for the good things we do. We want our actions to have consequences and rewards. We want others to get what they deserve. Every single one of us do, right? It's the result of, of evil seeping into the world. It's the result of evil within us. It's the result of someone focused on what they have to do to earn salvation. And this sort of heart state leads us to focus on how we are compared to others. Are we superior or inferior? Are we provoking or envious, as Paul warns in Galatians 5.26? If I'm saved by my works, if I'm made righteous by my following the law and my obedience, then I would constantly compare how much I'm doing with how much other people are doing, right? It puts, me, it put my, puts my focus on me and other people instead of the one who made me righteous. But if I receive the gospel and live by the direction of God's Spirit, then I am motivated to live differently. I'm given a, a new direction of life. I'm not above or below anyone else. I'm united into a family with them. And so I'm given a direction that reflects Jesus. And Jesus' entire life was characterized by humility and sacrificial love. Just a couple examples of that humility and sacrificial love in Matthew chapter 22, Jesus declares that the entire law can be fulfilled by loving God and loving our neighbor. In Romans chapter 15, Paul writes that our way of living should be characterized by building up our neighbors. In Philippians chapter 2, we are directed to imitate Christ's humility by becoming a servant even to the point of death. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we are reminded to be patient with everyone and always try to do what is good for each other. With all this in mind, as Paul writes to the Galatians, he comes to this point at the beginning of chapter 5. He says, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Living in a way that is about me trying to secure my position with God leads to death. But Jesus gives us the spirit that leads to life. He shows us that the way of life involves lifting others up in sacrificial love. So finally, we come back around to Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, where Paul ends his letter, again, by writing what it looks like for a community of faith to be living under the direction of God's Holy Spirit within us. They love sacrificially. He writes, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Living by God's Spirit compels us to sacrificially love each other and bear each other's burdens because Christ bore the full weight of our own burdens. Author and pastor Timothy Keller writes, Here is how Christians, a family, relate to others. You cannot help with a burden unless you come very close to the burdened person, standing virtually in their shoes and putting your own strength under the burden so its weight is distributed to both of you, lightening the load of the other. So in the same way, a Christian must listen and understand and physically, emotionally, and spiritually take up some of the burden with the other person. Rather than placing others under the burden of living the right way, we should be lifting burdens off of others. And that's how we reveal Christ's spirit living in us. The spirit of God enables us to bear one another's burdens with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. According to Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, it means when someone is living in a sin, we don't 
put more weight on that person, we carry the weight of that sin too. And our goal is to restore them with gentleness and empathy, understanding that we can just as easily fall into our own sin. Bearing burdens means we are not comparing our actions to another, looking at others saying, I'm doing more than you, I'm doing better than you, I'm doing less than or, or worse than you. It means we seek to share the goodness of God with all people, recognizing that the only good that can come from us is a result of God's Spirit moving and working and living in us. Bearing burdens means we understand that everyone has brokenness within them. It means we recognize that life can throw each of us unexpected curveballs or put more weight on your, 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 what you're carrying, and things can pile up to weigh heavily on our hearts and minds, right? Or even more simply, it means difficult things can be made easier when they're not done alone. Bearing someone else's burden could mean anything from having a conversation with someone to helping them move to making a meal to praying with each other. Carrying burdens moves us outward. It engages us with other people. It compels us to seek the benefit of other people. God does not promise us an easy life, right? But he does promise a community of faith and a caring father who can ease your burden. Yes, God does allow more than you can carry because it creates the opportunity for burdens to be shared and for God's love to be revealed in the sharing of those burdens. What better place to do this than in a community of believers, in a family of the body of Christ, right? In a church. In order for Jesus to be revealed here, burden sharing has to happen. I think sometimes we can come here, again, myself very much included, I think we can all come here and we just want to sit in a chair and check off the box for the week, right? We have, maybe we have our list of to-dos that may include a variety of things like doing our devotions, serving in a ministry, sitting in Sunday school, taking communion. Please, 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 please don't get me wrong. These things are incredibly important to do in response to a growing relationship with Jesus, right? But if we are doing these things out of obligation or simply so that we are good with God for the week or so we will earn a spot in heaven, Paul is warning that this is not the gospel. This is an attempt to please ourselves, please our own flesh in comparison with other people. If we are here without a desire to get, engage with others, if we are here without a desire to carry someone else's weight, then why are we here? God's Spirit working in us leads us to love each other sacrificially. The law of Christ is fulfilled when we share the weight of life with each other. This is the way of life displayed on the cross. And I wonder how we can, look at, how we can ever look at the cross, which is very clearly standing in front of every church, how we can look at Jesus holding our own heavy burden, the weight of the world, and say that I am not willing to carry something for someone else. The law of Christ cannot be fulfilled on our own. We are here to engage with each other and support one another. Many of us behave sometimes with the stubbornness of single trippers. We think we can handle everything on our own, even if we're carrying way more than we're able to. Unfortunately, we end up dropping and breaking things and spilling milk and making a bad smell. Each of us here carry, we do carry heavy burdens, right? We carry weight. We come into this place and we have something that weighs us down. Some of us struggle with a persistent sin. Some of us are financially in a bad spot. Some of us deal with the incredible weight of anxiety and depression. Some of us are simply just exhausted and overworked and tired. Some of us feel inadequate and invaluable. Whatever burden you come with today, I want you to know or ask, wouldn't it, wouldn't the body of Christ be so much more like Christ if we would just consistently be sharing these things with each other? Or if we let someone else carry these things with us? It doesn't eradicate the weight or make them insignificant or disregard the seriousness of the burdens, but it does make these burdens easier to carry so that we can go into the world knowing that other people are helping us along the way. And so with all that in mind, I'm going to encourage something that might be a little bit different for us here today. We are here together so Jesus can be revealed and glorified. And the point of what this whole me blabbing today is that happens. Jesus is glorified and revealed when we carry each other's burdens, when we love each other sacrificially, 
when we step into somebody else's situation and carry some of their weight with them. Sometimes all that means is opening up to somebody else and releasing some sort of bottled up emotion. Sometimes that means repenting of a sin and asking someone else to, keep, to help keep you accountable. Sometimes that means brainstorming solutions to a problem you're encountering uh, with somebody else, right? It's not an opportunity to gossip or criticize or experience shame. This is a chance to know Christ more through his spirit that is directing each of us in sacrificial love. So, what I would love to do to close our time today is I'm going to invite you to carry each other's burdens. Um, So this takes people willing to carry burdens, obviously, but it also takes people willing to share, right? If Owen didn't ask for help, probably he would still be carrying this thing up here for the poor boy, right? So we, this is an invitation to ask for help too, understanding that others here are willing to carry your burden. Um, so this is your encouragement to participate in fulfilling the law of Christ this morning. So all I want you to do is to just take a couple minutes to turn to the people around you, um, and I want you to ask, how can I carry something for you today? doesn't have to be significant. You don't have to share your deepest, darkest secret. No, that's not what I'm asking you to do. But I just want us to be comfortable in the space of to carry the burdens of each other so that we can see Christ revealed. We are more than a group of people coming into the same building this week. We are a church family. We are here for each other. This time we come together every Sunday is meant for us to experience and worship and reveal Jesus Christ together. And so the Spirit of God within us directs us to do that by carrying each other's burdens. If that doesn't happen here, it's not going to happen anywhere. And so I just want to give you like three minutes. Just turn to your neighbors close to you, form a, a few small groups, and just offer to carry somebody else's burden. Um, and then I will indicate when we will move on to the closing song. All right? So let me pray, and then I want to hear some chatter in this room. There's a lot of you here today. I expect some chatter. Let's pray. Father God, we are grateful for this time together. We're grateful for this body of believers that you have empowered to reveal your love, uh, your sacrificial love. Um, We are grateful that we can reveal your heart of compassion and empathy in the way we carry each other's burdens. And so I pray that this time can be just a small glimpse into what that might look like, uh, being willing to share with others who have received the same grace, have received the same love, and share that same love, um, not by our own power, but by your Spirit living in us. We thank you for this opportunity to share burdens today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I know three-ish minutes isn't a very a lot of much time to do this activity but consider this your invitation to do that more than just three minutes on a Sunday at the end of church Um, again we are here for each other we are a community of faith we are a family of Christ a, a family of the body of Christ here to carry the weight of others let me uh close in prayer and I will invite the praise team to come on up so that they can Be ready to lead us in our closing song. But let me just pray once more to close. Father God, we are grateful again for this space and this time and these people who can reveal you to each of us and give us the opportunity to reveal Christ in in the way we live and love each other. And I pray that we would do this more than just once a week, but that we would be moved to share each other's burdens, to carry each other's burdens every single day in our different uh, communities and our different life situations. And ask that we, again, would have the courage to ask others for help when we need some weight carried from our life. We thank you again for your love and your direction. Amen. As we close our, in our final song.
is crowned with glory now. The Savior now to wash our feet. Now at His feet we bow. The one, the one who wore our sin and shame. Now robed in majesty, the radiance of perfect love now shines for all to see. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise. To Christ our King, your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise with Christ our King. The one who found us now gives way to him who is our peace his final breath upon the cross is now alive in me your name your name is victory all praise will rise with Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise with Christ our King. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. in vain was borrowed for three days his body there would not remain our God has robbed the grave our God has robbed the
resurrecting me in your name I come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name I So as we have been given the same spirit that resurrected Christ and we are resurrected with him, let us go and share the burden of others. And you let this benediction serve as, a, as an invitation for you to stay and continue your burden sharing. This is not a time-limited thing. This is eternity we're talking about. Uh, but the, we're, let's also be encouraged to reflect Christ in this way in your workspace in your neighborhoods, in your families, in your communities, because God has indeed blessed you with his spirit so that you may share in his sacrificial love and fulfill his law by carrying each other's burdens. So let us grow, go with grace and peace and joy today that we can be so united to God's love and life through the power of Jesus' death and resurrection and spirit within us. Amen. Your name, your name is victory, your praise will rise in Christ our King, your name, your name is victory, your praise will rise to Christ our King, by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your 